I hear all the time, doctor, do I have bad cholesterol? I've heard this question so many times in my clinic when I'm seeing patients and I want to explain to you really why you should not be asking me or your physician if this is the point. And the point is we need to understand cholesterol. We need to understand what is cholesterol, what is the function in the body, how does it work, where is it produced, is it really really such a thing as a bad cholesterol or is there anything different from bad cholesterol. The thing is cholesterol it's produced in mostly every cell in our body. Cholesterol, it's mainly produced in the liver, but almost every cell in the body can produce its own cholesterol. The thing is, most of it migrates to liver, and the liver it's kind of the one that distributes the rest of the cholesterol in the body, depending on the needs for what we for what we need it. We need it for the production of hormones. We need it for inflammation. We need it for things in the neurological system. We need it for a lot of different reasons. It's absolutely important and it's absolutely necessary in the body. So when we have cholesterol in our blood, cholesterol cannot go in the blood on its own because it's a fat and you know that fats don't go well with liquids, with fluids, with water. And also it, is, it has a polarity, which won't be a good thing to have it in our blood. So that's why we have to put it inside of something. It needs to be wrapped in something in order to have a good way of being transported in the blood. What does it use? A protein. So when you go and see your lipid panel. If you have a lipid panel and it's reporting the amount of total cholesterol, the amount of LDL cholesterol, and the amount of HDL cholesterol, they're just saying how much does it weigh the amount of cholesterol that it's inside. But it's not LDL, it's not HDL. And this could be kind of confusing and you might be thinking like, what is the point? This is kind of confusing, but I want to really get to the point in which you can understand what is what it's been measured in knowing that LDL or HDL by itself on its own, it's not bad or good. So there is a myth of the bad cholesterol. I'm going to grab this balloon. So the thing is, cholesterol cannot travel in blood on its own. It's a fat and it's to be wrapped into something. So we're going to bring a uh, protein to wrap it. So this, the balloon, it's the protein. This is LDL, the LDL particle. What we have inside, what it's inside the air, if I fill this with oil, if I fill this with oil, with water, with whatever, this, what it's inside, it's going to be the cholesterol. When we get on the lipid panel, it's just putting this on a scale and weighing how much does it weigh the cholesterol that is inside, not the amount of the particles that I have. This makes a big difference. Why? Because there is a relationship, but there is a correlation in a bunch of studies about the correlation of the amount of LDL particles and the relationship with cardiovascular disease. But what we are getting in the lipid panel, it's not the amount of particles. It's just how much the content inside, inside of here, how much it's weighing. But we don't know how many particles that we have. And we need to understand this, and I'm going to bring you an example, because what it's linked, what it's related to heart disease, it's the amount of yellow balloons. But before that, we have to go to the myth of the good cholesterol. So let's imagine that this balloon, it's not yellow, it's red. So the particle that comes and brings the cholesterol from the peripheral tissues back into the liver so it can be recycled and I can put it in the bile and then excrete it in my feces, that's the HDL particle. And I'm going to put you another example. So what we need to address, what we need to understand is how many particles, how many balloons do I have? And there are different ways of knowing that. 
there are different ways. I can have any number. I can have a number LDL, which is, I don't know, 130 LDL cholesterol reported on the lipid panel. But how do I know if that cholesterol is being transported in a lot of little balloons? Let, let's say I, can, I could have those 130, but I could have a big balloon like... <laughs> I could have a big balloon to transport a lot of cholesterol on the inside and then let's say that each balloon that those 130 that it's reported I'm going to transport it in four of these balloons that are big enough and I can make a test a blood test it's called a lipid particle test or cholesterol lipid particle test. They can tell me how much big particles of LDL I have, or I could have a bunch of little particles, little balloons to transport those same 130. What's the problem? If I have a lot of these little ones, then I get the problem because these little ones are chronic inflammation. How can I know if I have a lot or if I have less? of these particles, there is a test called ApoB. ApoB, it's a protein that wraps around the LDL particle, the LDL protein. It's mainly on LDL. I can have it also in VLDL, but it's mainly on LDL. So when I have X number of LDL reported, any number, I have to go and see what's my ApoB level. Levels over 90, makes me think that I'm producing because of lifestyle reasons, uh, because of different reasons, I'm producing a lot of these particles and that can be a high risk for those particles to get in underneath and just go and build a plaque. That plaque can break and then I can have a thrombosis and then I can have heart attack. If my lifestyle is okay and I have done every single thing in my lifestyle to correct that, then I have to know that my genetics, because I have a genetic condition, I'm producing more of these transporters for even a little amount of cholesterol. I can have normal levels of cholesterol and having a big amount of ApoB, and that puts me on a very high risk for getting cardiovascular disease. So not everyone that has a high cholesterol means that they had, they could be making big balloons and transporting in big balloons, and that could be fine. You can discuss that with your physician. Or I could have normal cholesterol and be in a lot of risk. What's the other thing? There is another protein that it's important, another kind of particle that's called LP little a. LP little a, it's another particle that attached, gets attached to the LDL particle, but it's a particle that it also has a part that it's on genetics and also has a part that it's on lifestyle. But it's important to address this little, this, this particle because this particle increases the risk for thrombosis. Let's remember that 50% of the people that have a heart attack have normal cholesterols because we don't know how many particles do they have. What could be other things in my lifestyle to show me if I have big balloons or maybe small balloons, I can measure my insulin levels, my glucose levels, ferritin levels, PCR, hemoglobin, A1C. Also look at, at your triglyceride levels and look at the triglyceride HDL ratio, which must be under two. It means the amount of, tri of triglycerides that you should have shouldn't double the amount of, of HDL that you have. It could be also something that you could be looking at in order to try to think if you have within everything else, if you have big particles or small particles, or if you have a lot of particles going on in your life. So again, we need to think of lifestyle factors and lifestyle uh, and habits in order, this must be the pillar. This must be the base. Lifestyle is the major factor for the production of heart disease and also the major factor of the prevention for heart disease. It's not only diet, it's sleep, it's the management of stress, it's exercise. Of course, genetics can have an influence in cholesterol, in the production, especially in the production of these kind of particles. But again, we need to understand that these strategies for maintaining healthy cholesterol levels, and they need to be addressed in a different variety of ways. So we need to talk about this common myth. So when we need to 
get deeper into heart disease, we need to know the context. We need to go the individuality, the biochemical individuality of each single patient. And the final message is for you to know that the key points from this video is to know that you need to make decisions always knowing the importance of education, making informed decisions, and knowing that when you go and ask, why is cholesterol needed in the body? Is it really needed? Yes. Is there such a thing as a good and bad cholesterol? No. Is there any difference in between LDL particle and the HDL particle? Yes, but what they carry inside is the same cholesterol, which is not bad on its own. And there are also differences in the different kinds of LDL that we have in the body. And just by simplifying saying good or bad cholesterol, this is completely misleading. And we really know, need to know the importance of the relationship of those things that I've just mentioned with cardiovascular disease and or with cardiovascular health. So the best way that you can, that we can keep on building this and that we can uh, get through all these bits is by sharing the information. So please, if you think that this information was useful, please remember to share it with your contacts. And also please remember before you leave to hit the like button so more people can find this content. And also remember to subscribe to the channel and to hit the like button. So every time we make new videos, you're gonna be the first person to be notified. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. Wait, just a double. You need to involve it in something. It needs to be wrapped in something. Quitemos el involve. Es una palabra inventada.